Hey everyone, uh, my name is Calvin and welcome to my watercolor tutorial for Procreate. In this video we're going to paint a feather and I've done a feather video in the past but that was for a pretty simple kind of feather and uh, in this video I want to cover uh, how I would approach and how I would paint a much more complicated feather. So to start out here I'm just going to use a blank watercolor paper texture and I'm going to do all of this using the feather brush kit and I'll put links to those in the description as well. So I've already gone ahead and pasted in an image of a feather that I want to copy uh, and then I've made a simple sketch of it over here and basically I think it's a good example because it has a lot of colors a lot of unusual shapes uh, and it's very fluffy down here and also the image itself is sort of cut off so I think this tutorial is going to be useful uh, for painting more advanced more complicated feathers like this but if you can follow this process you could probably paint any kind of feather so to start, I'm going to lay down some color. So I'm going to make sure I have a blank layer underneath the watercolor texture because my sketch uh, and the photo are above the texture because I don't want them to get affected by that. But I still want to make sure I'm painting underneath the texture. So down here, I'm going to start by grabbing the base color. In this case, this sort of light powdery blue color, something like that. Uh, and then I'll grab the splatter abstract round and just fill out this uh, feather real quick. There we go, and in a few places I did go over the edge so I can just erase it uh, to follow my sketch a little bit better. And down here, uh, for these kind of loose fuzzy barbs, what I'll do is I'll grab the light barb liner and using the same color, I'll just carefully add those in. And because I'm going for a fluffy look, uh, I'm trying to add some different variations of width here. So I've got some really thin light ones, and some really heavy darker ones. And if I turn off the sketch, you'll get a better look at this. So yeah, I've got a, quite a variety there, but also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that uh, barb plumage blender in the feather brush kit and uh, medium size, and I'll just carefully go in there with that. And it will sort of automatically blend those barbs and create some really tiny fluffy ones. And this gives it a sort of downy texture. Just make sure you go in line uh, with the barbs. There we go, that's pretty good. I'll turn the sketch back on. And next I want to do the spine of the feather and I think what I'll do is since it's black and it fades to this kind of gray down here I'll start with a pretty dark color almost black and then I'll use the uh, light barb liner and it's hard to do a smooth line uh, this big but if I zoom out I can do it all in uh, one stroke there we go that looks pretty good so in order to do that sort of gray transition down here I'm gonna use the selection tool on freehand and just make a selection like this that just sort of slices through there. I'll feather it out just a tiny bit uh, and then hue saturation and brightness and just adjust it until it's a pretty light gray. And we do lose some contrast. Uh, if I turn off the sketch, you'll see it better. I do feel like I'm losing a little bit of contrast here. So what I'll do is I'll grab the light barb liner and maybe a pretty light gray, but just a little bit darker than this one and see if I can draw in some contrast. So using that slightly darker gray color, I'll just go along the edge and just sort of define a boundary there. There we go, that's pretty good. So now I need to lay out the color. Uh, I think I'm gonna hide the spine of the feather here and turn on the sketch again so I can see all these uh, colored areas I tried to sketch out. So what I'll do is um, I'm gonna make sure I'm on that color layer, this background layer where we painted the powdery blue color and I'll use the selection tool and I'll just select each of these areas, just like that. I'll feather them out just a little bit. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'm gonna try to shift the hue until I can get that orange color. And in this case, my original color is pretty desaturated. So even when I max out the saturation, I can't quite get it. So I'll just apply that change uh, and then do it again. There we go, I've got the orange on. So now I want to do this black area, but I'll use the same technique. And I didn't go all the way to pure black, just and I just sort of stuck with a pretty dark gray. And now for the green, this kind of green area over here. So I think that's kind of like this. There we go. And I still feel like this orange color is not getting vibrant enough. So what I'll do is I'll make a new layer on top of this. I'll try to grab that orange color using the uh, eyedropper there uh, and then using the wet abstract brush and just try to paint on some more vibrant orange in there just like that. 
uh, and then I'll use the water blender and just sort of blend it around uh, and see if I can fit that in there. There we go, I'm happy with that. Uh, I do want to lower the transparency just a little bit uh, and then I'll merge those two layers together just so all of my color uh, is now on one single layer. So now at the bottom here, I do have this sort of gray transition, so I'll use the selection tool and uh, do a selection like that, feather it out quite a bit, uh, and then see if I can sort of desaturate it, and then maybe lighten it just a little bit. There we go, just so I have that gray transition going on. And maybe one final color is it does get kind of a more saturated blue up here, so I'll do a selection like this, feather it out, and try to make that a little bit more vibrant. There we go, I think that looks better. Now I can turn on my spine, uh, and we can get a better idea of what our feather is going to look like. So at this point, I think I'm pretty comfortable to turn off that sketch. I don't need it anymore. And what I want to do next is add the texture of the feather. Uh, all the, if you zoom in here on a feather, you can see it has all these parallel lines. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to try to isolate one of my barb, uh, one of my veins here. So on a feather, you have uh, basically the left side and the right side, and these are technically called the left vein and the right vein. So on a different layer above this colored layer, I'm going to use the selection tool and just isolate uh, first the left vein here. So I'll just draw a selection as close as I can, just along the edge, and then I'll separate it by going right down the center. And then if I grab the streaky barb liner uh, and then a pretty dark gray color and I use that it's gonna make all these kind of parallel lines and because I made that selection of just one vein it doesn't they don't show up anywhere else other than where I selected so what I'm gonna do is that use that as kind of like a mask and I'm just gonna go down uh, at this pretty steep angle and just add those grain details and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side the same way. I'll just use that selection tool and just sort of isolate uh, the right vein in this case. And same brush, I'll just go along and do this kind of angular strokes just to give it that texture. And now I'm gonna go in the layers panel. And since this was on a totally separate layer, uh, I'm gonna set it to multiply and then change the opacity really low and then just slowly raise it until I barely start to see that texture coming through. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Uh, what I want to do now is add some splits. I'll do that with the eraser tool, and I'm going to set it to the feather vein dotter. And I want to set it to pretty small, maybe 20%. And I'll make sure I'm on uh, the right layer here, but I think at this point I will merge the texture uh, and the color together just by pinching those. Now when I erase it, I'm just basically erasing through everything. And uh, that does keep it a little bit uh, more organized here. So. If I use that eraser tool and just carefully do these split shapes where I start off really soft and then press harder and harder until I exit the feather, uh, it does add a really cool convincing uh, split feather effect. Just make sure on the bigger splits you sort of round the edge as you exit the feather, but on the little ones it doesn't really matter. And uh, I think it is also important to make sure you do some splits down here because generally most of the splits start to occur where the feather sort of transitions uh, to the downy or softer area. Just be careful not to add too many because it does make the feather look kind of uh, worn out. Okay, there we go. Um, I do feel like I lost some contrast, s something about uh, where the spine meets the red area, but when I look at the original drawing, I see this interesting kind of highlight. So I want to try to replicate that. So what I'll do is uh, I'll make a new layer on top of the, the uh, spine here. And then I'll choose kind of a light gray color, very light gray. And I'll choose the light barb liner. And I'll just try to faintly draw uh, that kind of highlight on this uh, barb. Good. Uh, anywhere where you notice you have a contrast issue, it's okay to do a line or a border, just like what I did down here. It helps define the shape. And I think the shape uh, can be more important than how realistic it is, because it, in the end, it's still a watercolor illustration. Uh, not a photograph. So I'd say this feather is, is really close to being done. Um, I do want to add some more texture in the orange area. So the way we did the texture before is we used that streaky barb liner uh, and then we changed that layer to multiply and that's how we got this sort of uh, grain effect. So what I want to do here though is instead of making it darker I want to do another layer of these lines but they're going to be lighter. So let's make a new layer 
And I'm going to put this underneath the uh, spine of the feather, so just underneath there. And using the streaky barb liner, uh, I'm going to use white, and I'm just going to try see what this looks like. Okay, I think that's going to work actually. So let me erase the areas where it went over the edge. And I'll try to do the same thing to the other side, but I'll use the selection tool to sort of mask it off. And I'm really only concerned about this orange area. And just to kind of clean up where it does go in just a weird area, I'll use the water blender and I'll just sort of blur it until it disappears. There we go. And I'll lower the uh, opacity of that layer just so I can barely see uh, this effect. And that's just a trick to handle areas where the normal texture just doesn't really cut it. You need some highlights in there. Okay, let me merge all these layers together now. So now everything is on one layer. And now I can sort of focus on the, um, I guess you'd call it the highlights. So one thing I like to do is isolate uh, just half of the feather. So using that selection tool set to freehand, I'm just going to go down one side of the feather like this. Uh, and I'll feather that out just a little bit to soften the edge. Uh, and then I'm going to darken that side of the feather. So I'm just going to lower the brightness, but just a little bit just to make it just a little bit darker so it looks a little bit odd. Uh, but then I'll go over it again and I'll select, whereas here I selected down the middle, uh, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to select just off to the side like this. And then I'll feather that one out just about until, until that boundary meets the middle of the feather. And then I'll fix the brightness. I'll brighten it back up to where it was before. There we go. And I just feel like that adds a little bit of uh, dimension or curve to the feather. And I do like the way that looks. The edge of this feather ended up being really smooth. Uh, I want to make it a little bit softer, actually. Uh, so I'm going to use the Barb Plumage Blender. Pretty small size, medium size, I guess. Uh, and then I'm just going to carefully go along the edge. And you notice when I do this, it sort of pushes back the edge of the feather. Uh, and sort of softens it a little bit, but it still retains that sort of feathery texture. And I won't do this everywhere, I'm just going to do this in a handful of areas. And there we go, this could be done. Um, if you paint a whole feather and still something isn't quite right, maybe the proportion, uh, you can always just go to the selection tool, set it to warp, and you can kind of warp the feather. And sometimes just a subtle change uh, can make a huge difference to how the feather looks but uh, I think that looks pretty good. So there we go, that's it. That's how I'd paint a, a more complicated watercolor feather. Um, I know this tutorial was a little bit more complicated than what I usually do, uh, but I do recommend if you're into feathers, uh, watch the first feather tutorial first. I think you'll find that one easier to follow. And then maybe if you're uh, looking for a challenge, you can try to follow this one and paint some more complicated feathers. So that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.